about some of the benefits of CPCRM Drupal integration. Uh, CPCRM has uh, access to Drupal's ability to scale real big. Um, multitude of uh, existing add-on modules. Drupal's module count is about 20,000, and many of these modules can be utilized in CPCRM. Um, there's a large ecosystem of Drupal developers already. So the more we make city center of uh, work with Drupal, uh, the more that's attractive to Drupal developers. Uh, <clears throat> we want to theme it once and make it responsive. I don't know if y'all saw the USA Today yesterday. Uh, Google's changed their uh, algorithm for the searches. And uh, uh, if you're on a mobile phone and, you don't have a res and you're searching for a site, it's going to uh, drop the, your ranking if your uh, site is not responsive. So that's going to be a big deal. They're calling it mobile game. <laughs> so basically, you want to have uh, every public facing form or data be responsive. And that's a really important challenge. Uh, you may have heard that 50% of web traffic is mobile now. So uh, it's a really important thing. Um, so SEO is also important. You want to uh, have people be able to find your uh, page, find your form, find that donation form, and be able to get there. So everything we can do to uh, improve SEO, we can do that. <clears throat> so uh, in my mind, Drupal is evolving to a systems management system. It's not just a content management system. So many different systems have integration modules or can be integrated with Drupal that uh, so, uh, CBCRM being one of those, and CBCRM can take advantage of all that being integrated with Drupal. So there's tons of Google services and APIs, analytics, tag managers, AdWords. Uh, we can use MailChimp, although CBCRM's mailing feature I think is better, so I would use that. But uh, if you're using something else, things like Piscus, Share this, which connects with uh, many different services. Reddit, another really good one. Uh, so by connecting CV Serum with Drupal, you can mix, promote, and cross-reference CV Serum data uh, from data with external sources. Uh, the idea here is to make CV Serum and more than Drupal the database of record, the hub of your organization's data wheel. You're going to uh, likely have many services that you use and you want to put together. And again, Google Analytics. You may have heard of Google Civic Information. Uh, that should be being able to query a uh, the elected official data for an, uh, an election data uh, based on election or address. So, uh, for a lot of organizations, it might make sense to uh, have that integrated system. Uh, Facebook accounts, Twitter accounts, kind of obvious. Uh, that's big, and you might want to connect your contacts with those kind of things. <clears throat> so there's many modules that uh, are available uh, that integrate uh, CBCRM with Drupal. And I'm going to go, I want to talk about three in particular in this session, but they range from a very general ed, uh, integration to just very specific functionality that's provided. And Oh, was Sorry. That was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that was Thank you. Sorry. So, uh, CPCRM Entity, I think, is a very important module, and it uh, integrates it at a very uh, deep level. So you're uh, integrating your data for use by Drupal Core and many, many modules. And we're going to talk more about that later. Um, Anything that uses the Drupal Entity API, uh, it opens up uh, possibilities for integrating your city CRM data with that functionality. Webform city CRM, if you're not aware, is a great module. Uh, integrates Drupal forms with business functionality. Uh, you can make responsive forms, and you can do, combine many functions in, in one form. Very cool. Uh, Views CV CRM exposed tables uh, module Square's been developing. This exposes all CVCRM data to views. <clears throat> we've got uh, views and CVCRM dashlets. It's another uh, module we've been developing. And this makes uh, ability to make views and push them and become a dashlet. And we're going to talk about that one. 
Another one I want to mention I think is important is Commerce of Ethereum. And this allows you to uh, sell products, sell different things using the Drupal Commerce framework and push contribution data to the CVC area. So uh, gives you a lot of options there. And if you go to this link, there's you know about a 120 something modules that integrate with the uh, CVC area. Okay, uh, so I want to go from the specific to the general and start off with views in Civi CRM dashlets. This uh, enables creation of custom dashlets using a view. Uh, the flexibility of views can be now used to create dashlets. You don't need to know how to code PHP. You just site builder and go in, make a view. Uh, we're gonna go through kind of the instructions and then um, push it to a dashlet, making dashlets in five minutes. Yeah, you just add a views display, and yeah. Uh, so this opens up a, a dashlet to more of a site builder type of a person. You don't have to know PHP. You don't have to uh, know S SQL. You just uh, uh, use the view. So, and I can show you, I've got a little example that I want to show you all, and the whole page was made in less than an hour. Um, so another advantage is it's not just about Civi CRM data sometimes. You, maybe you want to have uh, other Drupal data on the dashlet. Maybe you want to have documentation for your client. Maybe you want to have clinks to your website or to a report a problem for them. Well, just put that on the dashboard, make it easy for them. So requirements, Civi CRM 4, 4, 4, 5, or 4, 6, Drupal 7, Views 3. It can be downloaded here. It's in Sandbox right now. Uh, Maybe I'll put that on GitHub to make it easier to download and that'll uh, go into full project status as we uh, develop more on it. And that was developed by Brandon Farrell, a developer of, uh, with Square. Some of it's the same. Uh, without hard coding CV serum reports, it uh, just uses a views display plugin, just like a page or a block or anything else. You just add a, uh, add a display. Set a couple settings, save, go to your dashboard and add the dashlet. You can use exposed filters, you can use exposed sorts, you can use the pager, it's all, uh, if you enable Ajax, it all works. And you can enable or disable it. Then you can use all the other things you get with uh, views, headers, footers, uh, no results, text. Um, basically, we haven't found much that hasn't worked yet, so. Here's just a screenshot of a, a dashboard with a bunch of uh, dashlets made from views. Some of these are you know, things you might just want to see at a quick glance. Uh, these are all views. You can see we have a, we had a documentation content type, made some nodes, and threw it on the dashboard so that the uh, client could uh, have quick access to their documentation. I put the CSV here. You can do CSV exports from the dashboard. So that's using uh, some auxiliary modules. We'll talk about some of those. Uh, views aggregation is very handy, and you can make things like membership totals by membership type very quickly. Here's a picture of the uh, interface and views. We had a view. Uh, you can see that if you just add CV Serum dashlet, uh, and then everything else is the same. A few little settings over there, make it active, full screen, add the dashlet weight, go. <clears throat> so some use cases, already mentioned, quick links to documentation, uh, quick links in general to anywhere, uh, custom reports, no coding required. You want to answer questions faster and easier. So um, some of these examples of questions might be um, any of those listed here. Um, and really use your imagination. It could be uh, hundreds of different questions you want to have answered. Yeah. Did you say you use views aggregation to get totals? That's uh -huh. a, that's a views. Yeah, it's built in, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm, I'm at the, uh, toward the end, I want to do build one real quick for y'all just to see. It's quick. Another couple of UK use cases I thought of was uh, quickly build custom searches. Uh, you could have <laughs> 10 different searches on the dashboard. And they could be very customized using an exposed filter and views, and you can have 10 different ones or however many uh, suited to your particular needs. No code required. What about uh, other information? What if you're doing uh, AdWords campaigns? What if you're doing analytics? Maybe you want to have a, a quick little uh, dashboard about, dash little about that on the, on the, for your uh, clients to see how many people came to the form, to the donate form. How many people came to that form from a certain campaign? This all might be very useful information to have at a glance. I've got some instructions here. Uh, these slides are available online uh, on the session page, so I'm not going to spend a ton of time, but you can see it's really a very quick process. Create a new view, add the filters, field sorts, relationships, headers, footers, whatever. Make sure if you want the exposed filters to and pagination to work uh, inside the dashlet, use use Ajax option. Um, you can add a display then, set the description, that'll be the label of the dashlet. <coughs> set its active, its full screen status, weight properties. We've uh, for our use case, and uh, we thought it made sense to make a make it be a page view at the same time as a dashlet. If you ever wanted a backlink and maybe do a little more um, advanced functionality, maybe something didn't quite work in the dashlet, so you get both at the same time. Then you go to your dashboard, find your dashlet, drag it onto the pane, click done, it's installed. <coughs> wanted to share some uh, modules that might be interested in using in conjunction with it. Uh, Built-in views has aggregation, very handy. There's a module called views calc that does some sums, counts, mins, max, and other operations. Views data export, export as a CSV, XLS. So that, uh, very handy right there, makes it easy. Views aggregator plus, this is a very cool module. Uh, provides advanced aggregation. It's actually PHP-based aggregation, not, uh, not SQL. So uh, you can, it has some built-in uh, functions you can do, and you can add your own and make uh, custom aggregator functions. Very awesome. Uh, view CV Serum exposed tables, we'll talk about again. Um, maybe there's uh, data that you want to get at it uh, in uh, views that is not exposed by default. And really, uh, we've used it for several purposes, and we'll talk about it more, uh, what the use cases are for that. Civi Serum Entity, uh, especially if you want to reference and use Entity Reference and tie things together and, and mix Drupal and Civi Serum data at the same time. And Views Hooks, if your developer views hooks that run and affect the output just like normal, and we've used this to do things like uh, DC, D3, interactive graphs, and dashlets through a view. I don't know everything that could work here with this. There's hundreds of modules that extend views, so I'm happy to hear uh, other people's experiences once they start using it. Things that might not work right out of the box would maybe be stuff that's doing uh, JavaScript and loading that JavaScript uh, is a, a little bit of a trick. You can do it in a pre-render hook, but uh, it's touch and go. It just depends on how the uh, how the the views plugin implements it. <clears throat> Second module, getting a little more general. Um, it's kind of a utility module that we developed for our inter internal use, but I think it's. Uh, a good module we want to share with the community. So this module will expose every every or any table uh, in the Civi Serum database to views. And you know, out of the box, you get quite a bit of good uh, views integrations. But there's some gaps, and those gaps include contribution pages. So 
Maybe you just want a list of all your contribution pages so people can go see, I want to donate for this or that or whatever. You can make a view real quick. Well, it, you check which tables you want to expose right. so it doesn't just expose everything. So uh, out of the box, I've tried it. You know, it'll, it'll even with the core CV CRM, and it, it it works out pretty good. Uh, if there is, if it's already exposed, I definitely recommend using the uh, core CV CRM modules or um, CV CRM entities. But this is mainly for getting at stuff that you normally wouldn't be able to in a view. There's a few fields in some of those tables that aren't exposed to and you can get at those if you want. Some of that would expose things that are restricted by default with the severe views. That, yes, that's correct. Yeah, so for, uh, for, say that again? Well, just if you have users who are, who are not civvy admins but have views, they'd have access to data that would normally be Right, and you'd want to uh, control their access to views with the permissions too. So yeah, it's something to watch out for. But okay. So use cases and real world examples. I mentioned the custom formatted list of contribution pages which a potential donor uh, could contribute to. And it just seems like a simple thing, but if you want to make a list of all your contribution pages, are you going to hand code that, or how are you going to do that exactly uh, to present it to the public? So this is the way to do that. Um, another big reason for this module is if you use Civi CRM extensions and there's not view support for those extensions, you can get right at that data. <coughs> Oh really? Okay. Rock on for a Civi CRM entity, or is yeah. it okay? I'd love to add that to the slides and update it. So, <laughs> um, and we had a use case uh, where we needed to create an interface for a crowdfunding website, and we wanted to mix data from campaign entity contribution pages, personal campaign pages, and we were using the team campaign extension. So how to put all this in one view and a nice interface for people. So this module, uh, this is really how that came into being. But, uh, you know, a couple of other ones, maybe you just want a system log or some other thing that, you know, there's some utility. And that really, I mean, I can't imagine all the uses that might, people might come up with, especially in the future. <clears throat> So for this example, uh, like I said, we needed to uh, connect the campaign contribution page, personal campaign pages, and team campaign extension data in one easy to use, easy to navigate user interface. How are we going to do that? <clears throat> I put a link up here, and I can show it. Oh, man, let me go backwards. Uh, uh, you can go to that site if you want to check it out. That's live. We did for the uh, University of Minnesota. And uh, very successful. Um, so I used the view to list all the contribution pages because uh, personal campaign pages have a contribution uh, page ID. That's how they're sorted in the table. So I wanted to list all the different, we have different campaigns running with different uh, contribution pages. So we want to put all that in one interface. We did some web form integration too, so you could just select which campaign you want to go to, redirect you to the page. This is an example of the views page. And I wanted to give a shout out to Mateo who wrote the PCP uh, Teams extension, very awesome. And we use, so I build one view that uh, lists the contribution pages, then two other auxiliary views, one for the teams and one for the individual pages. Use another module called Views Field View that lets you embed a view in a view and pass the ID to it, outputs it all in one page. <clears throat> so that's the user interface. Maybe you want to have reporting of the same thing. Uh, I can't show you the live example of this, 
but this was our uh, test data as we were getting prepared. And these are some DC interactive graphs. We actually modified the team module, uh, made it members, individuals, or teams. And we can uh, um, track you know, contributions per type, PCP type, and we get totals over here. Of course, that data is just test data. <clears throat> By the way, that can be placed in the dashlet. So that requires some assembly. <laughs> but not much. Huh? Not too much, but not much, yeah. It's really just about loading the JavaScript and, and making sure that runs in the dashlet, is what I'm saying, you know, so. <clears throat> So, uh, download the module, install it in normal Drupal fashion, go to the uh, admin page for it. The module will attempt to detect the CBCRM database. You need to do the, uh, the, the views integration that's documented on the uh, CBCRM website. That'll uh, give this module access to all the data. Check the tables you want to use, click save, go to create a view. The check tables will now be in the show drop down on the views create page. Every column will be exposed as a field. We're detecting the uh, MySQL data type and applying an appropriate uh, handler. <clears throat> Here's a, just what the admin page just lists all the tables, check which ones you want. Click save. And adding a new view, just so happened I was going to expose the uh, UF field table. And that's for profile fields. And you can make a view of that. I wanted to give a few code examples for people. So one thing, once you expose a table, maybe you want to connect it with other tables. You need to add a views relationship. Here's a nice template for you all to use. Uh, basically, uh, you can do this, so connect one table to the other. The table you're connecting, the table you want to connect it to, and away you go. All right, CBCRM Entity 2.x. Uh, a lot of work's been going into this over the past year. Uh, some advances have been made, and I think uh, it's good to talk about that today. Um, what does this do? This exposes CVCRM data as Drupal data. CVCRM data becomes properties of Drupal entities. So let's learn about what it can do. Thanks to Eileen for creating this module. <laughs> and talk a little bit about use cases. People like to hear about use cases, so really there's uh, a thousand use cases or more. But to understand that, it's a very general module to understand why that's so useful. Let's talk a little bit about what it does. <clears throat> so Drupal is a content management system. CB Serum is a constituent management system, relation management system. Each has a feature set to handle the, the needs of its team with excellence. So what is CiviCRM Entity? That's the, uh, that's the power. Why is that powerful? Okay, do more with your CiviCRM data. Um, okay, I'll put these slides in the wrong order, I don't know. Uh, so I think we're up to 17 entities exposed right now. Uh, some of the advantages, uh, rules integration, it's used, I think that was the original use case maybe, and uh, very powerful, so you want to react. When a contact gets created, maybe you want to do certain, uh, maybe you want to create a user, something like that. Okay, new in 2.x though, Drupal fields on city CRM data. Uh, there's just so many Drupal fields available. 
I don't think we need to wait or ask the city CRM 14 to make responsive videos available on city CRM pages when Jubilee has it. So let's use it. <coughs> New also is display suite integration. Uh, the new site building only custom view pages, edit forms. There's add forms and delete forms. And customizable, oh, customizability. Expose the CIPI CRM data to Drupal's powerful and popular in the API. I might have some code examples later. Any Drupal module that acts on entities with the entity API can theoretically interact with CIPI CRM data and do its thing. Rules integration, some examples already mentioned, react to any CV CRM entity, create, update, delete, such as create users, but it could be many other things. Maybe you want to sign to a group, maybe you want to uh, tag them, maybe you want to uh, run a little PHP snippet. A lot of things that can be done there. Uh, maybe you want to update some other CV CRM data when uh, some uh, membership script. Maybe you want to populate a custom field or something. You know, uh, do anything like that. With City Serum Entity, also tokens are enabled throughout the system. So that's available in rules, that's available in Display Suite. Anything that takes advantage of Drupal tokens is available. Uh, City Serum data made available. Lots of text. Lots of stuff. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we got uh, Drupal view pages. Install the module. Go to uh, Drupal root CV Serum dash contact one. You're going to see the contact with ID one. All these displays can be managed with uh, Display Suite, so you can have multiple view modes. You can uh, lay them out in the Display Suite layouts. You can. Um, Use Display Suite custom fields with tokens and combine things together, put HTML in there, whatever. We're doing show and hide fields, show and hide labels. Uh, we've got property formatters. Uh, uh, property, so then HTML wrappers also, if you want to make the title of heading two, you want to make this heading three, and so on. Uh, make it easier for theming, you can also add classes, uh, CSS classes. <clears throat> Drupal fields I mentioned this for me is just I mean uh, being able to put any kind of field and associate with city serum data and make public displays with that uh, information it's fantastic there's quite a few advantages to this um, just the so many field add-ons that you can download and use there's they create new field types. There's also manipulations of the fields that you might want to do. Multi-valued fields, not in a field set, but just the field itself. Field level permissions. Images of files to me is huge. Uh, how about image cache? How about responsive images? Um, it's already there. Let's use it in Drupal. Uh, maybe you want to do a slideshow. Maybe you want a video. You can do things like drag and drop features, and you got a public and private file system that's uh, very robust and established. Okay. Other things you might want to add to your city serum displays media, video, audio. You can embed the player on the view page. Mapping, geofill, this is another big thing. Geofill modules store polygonal geodata, sets of points or regular points. Uh, make your layer map, advanced proximity calculations, and you can do, put like using something like the open layers module, make as many layers as you want. Uh, have a little select list over there. Uh, really, some really cool stuff you can do with mapping nowadays. Um, Hook in with Google and get the directions. Have them output the directions to the conference you're going to the Google API from their location. Stuff like that. Entity reference. I mean, that's the bread and butter right here. Being able to connect uh, Drupal data with CIVI CRM data or CIVI CRM data with CIVI CRM data. 
and custom references. Module I love, use every day, field collections. Uh, and you want to collect acts similar to how uh, custom fields act in city CRM. Uh, when you have multi-value fields, it's a collection of fields. that acts like a field that is a collection of fields. Too many dimension. Other integration possibilities that we're going to have here. And any reference mentioned already. Views bulk operations. Maybe you want to uh, update all contacts for some reason, change some data value, add into a group. Check out this module here at this address for uh, more actions. Yeah, but two point eight you can do view bulk operations natively. That you don't need that. That's got a couple of actions, but okay. two point eight you can do native, you know, update actions. Okay. Mm. Alright. <laughs> so are you said with with City CRM entity, can you edit City CRM data on the entity? Yes. It's like a Drupal, it's a Drupal edit form that edits the city CRM data. Okay. And can, so then could you use field, field permissions um, on city CRM Not on the city CRM data, no. no. Okay. You can do, I mean, you can permission the, I mean, there's the same city CRM permission, basically, if whether yeah. you were able to edit that entity, but not on the field level. But if you're already using Drupal, uh, why not just use Drupal fields and get all that you know, custom fields? Not necessary. <clears throat> Some other things I've tried that work that's really kind of cool. The flag module, the five star voting API. Maybe you want to let uh, people rate your events that you have. Uh, very simple use case, but interesting. I don't know if you're aware of the relation module in Drupal. You can make uh, very complex custom relationship sets. Um, so maybe you want to relay uh, an event to a contact, to a contribution, to whatever, and you can make these uh, custom relationship sets. Very powerful user integration. Cool. Um, search API, maybe you want to search, uh, maybe you want to use Apache Solar or something, search your database, maybe you've got a minute contact. Try that out. This one I just did this morning. Yeah. The reply module, if you want to add comments in it, want to add comments to event info pages, you can use this module in 30 minutes, you got comments. So that's just a few examples. So theoretically, any module that uses Drupal Entity API can then access and do its thing with CBCR. <coughs> Talking about the add, edit, delete forms. Um, there's just a token here, like cbcrm-contact-add. You can add cbcrm data or edit. Um, we've got we've done some work for Drupal form widgets for dates, Googleians, and option lists. And um, I've also done uh, some reference links. So if you have like a household ID and you want to just link right to, click on it and just create a link, and go right to it. So what are some use cases for this? This is um, one responsive forms. Big, big, uh, maybe you want to provide very specific editing capabilities for certain limited users. Uh, out of the box, we're given uh, forms that do everything. All right, the code's right there though, and uh, it's. It's not too much of a stretch to uh, do very specific. Maybe you want to volunteer to update participants as they come in. You just want to do that one thing, and you want them to do that one thing real quick on their mobile phone. Create a little form to do that. There, there's many different ways uh, to do that kind of a thing. There's another module called Views Forms, where you can do views and then it acts as a form. I haven't tested it yet, but I don't see why. Lots of potential there, and that's really what I want to say about these here. Maybe just the potential, and then delete forms if you want to delete that way. Uh, this all boils down and it just makes a wrapper around the city serum API, so it's going to follow API rules. Uh, so really, let's say safe. You know, if you used it for the API before, then you know, these forms are the same way. 
I think this is really important for attracting Drupal developers. All right. Drupal people love Drupal and they want to do it the Drupal way and now they can. So uh, you can develop new modules, theme elements without running a new API and makes available all the core Drupal API entity objects and methods as well as those provided by the entity API. So if y'all are developers here, uh, entity field queries, very handy. Um, way to search programmatically for contacts, object oriented based. Um, in this example, returning array of content IDs, start with the first name of Iris, sort of by the last name. Code is very readable, it makes sense. I don't know what that one over here. Check out that link for a lot more information on how to use that object. Entity made a metadata wrapper. Uh, this is the recommended way for saving and viewing data programmatically in Drupal. Uh, see the example here: We're setting a contact ID, a type, loading the entity, creating the metadata wrapper. You want to set something on. You want to set the legal name of that contact. Use a set method. Say, get the updated object. You can then print out the values, all very option very cool. So really the question is, what can we do today with CBCRM plus Drupal plus CBCRM entity and anything we imagine? <laughs> <clears throat> and if you have questions, need help, want to learn more, want to kind of get CBCRM Drupal integration, there's my email address, you can find me in all these places. Patrick is where to and uh, we'll help you out answer your questions and make your solution. Okay, that's the slides and I thought I would uh, kind of do some demos or uh, things like that. Let's see some of the stuff I'm talking about here. Now that the uh, extension architecture works pretty well, um, what's moving from uh, stuff that's implemented as Drupal modules? and uh, stuff that's, rec that's uh, implemented as extensions. What's the, uh, what's the right reason to uh, write a Drupal module? Yeah. If you need to use the Drupal API, then write a Drupal module. If you're doing it with the CiviCRM API, then use the CiviCRM extension. And if, you, if you're putting it out to the community uh, and it's a CiviCRM specific function, then do it in a CiviCRM extension so other people, even non-Drupal people, can take advantage of that. Now, if you want uh, Drupal API functionality, then you want to just write it as a Drupal module. Although you can, I do, if I do a CiviCRM extension, I'll add a hook to the clear as an entity because if you're not using Drupal, you'll be affected, but if you're using Drupal, you'll get that as an entity. So you can make the extension smart. You can make it, uh, make it use, uh, if Drupal's there, it can use it. If, it. if WordPress is sitting on top, uh, it just doesn't get called. It doesn't get called, Is that documented out there that we can? There, I think there's a ticket somewhere, maybe. But also, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I think maybe somewhere. Okay. It'd be good to add to the slides and just give yeah. people as much information as they can have. Um, do y'all want to make a dash lid in five minutes? Yeah. I mean, yeah. here was an example of this is what we had before. So what do we want to make? Anybody got an idea? Okay, yeah, all right. Well, we've got time. What do we got here? It's 10. We got 30 minutes, so. Uh, all right, well, we've got three things to do then. Um, let's make a dash look real quick because I think that's just really neat. Uh, what do we want to talk about? What do we want to do? Put this over here. Memberships needing renewal. Memberships needing renewal. So these would be memberships that are expired. Let's see here. Let's 
So I do have a CV Serum entity installed, but these memberships are available uh, to views from the core Drupal module also. If the what? No, I haven't tried it. Yeah, I don't see why it wouldn't. It, the thing would be the the return page, but this has a page view, and you know it's the dashlet view is a page view. We extend it off the page view object, so for those kinds of reasons, maybe you want to redirect back to the view still. Can you show the drop down list to the, the, the view still? So, because like, so how do you tell the what's the entities modules out of there? Um, I know things like price field values, price fields, price sets. That's came from Civi Serum Entity. Um, and these were ones that I exposed uh, with the view Civi Serum exposed tables. But we wanted to find memberships that are needing renewal. So, yes? Can we make it a little bit more exciting where we do memberships that are up for renewal, but also show them if we've already phoned them? Because I, okay. I find we often run into troubles when you're trying to pull data from different yeah. tables. And it's a very um, if you've reason. If you've already phoned them, so how have you logged that you've phoned them? As an activity. As an activity. So. Have they been phoned since the expiry date? Have they been phoned since the expiry date? Yes, exactly. Just, just assume that if that we phone were, call was about that. We've already, sure. or maybe, maybe the phone call actually has. <laughs> 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 we phoned them five times. They're not renewing. <laughs> 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 right? They're still showing on this dashboard and expired, but let's, maybe not. They start fine. <laughs> Let me make the first one first, and then we'll uh, think about that. <laughs> Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're put me on the spot here. So uh, let's just get a contact name. Yeah, I, I'm sure we can do that, but we have several things we do want to uh, cover. Basically, what I want to show you is that it works. Here's how you can make a view and make a dashlet. Maybe I want a table view. Or maybe we want this. I don't know. Let's not get complicated. So then we want to filter the memberships by. Membership status. There was a expired. Maybe they're in the grace too. Maybe we just want to expose this filter. Make sure for the pager and the expose filter to work right. You do this. You can find out for yourself what happens if you don't. <laughs> it basically, just you can still view the view and keep going. It's just outside the theme, so it's uh, we had to strip all theme elements away. You want to just have the just the view and the dashlet, right? Okay, what are we doing here? We got a few guys here that. Uh, Worked. All right, so we just add our uh, Civi Serum dashlet display. So it's a recognized type of views. Yeah, it adds a, a views display. Mm -hmm. It's red right now. We need to set all these values. Is it active? Yes, it's going to be active. I will say that this full screen functionality is a little wonky right now, so we'll get that figured out, but whatever. Let's we'll say yes. And 
you know, maybe we should auto set the weight or something one day. Uh, you do not want to set a weight that's already in use. Mm -hmm. So we'll, uh, happy to take suggestions in the issue queue. And we got to set the page, we're inherited off the page, uh, display type. What are we doing? Memberships, uh, need call, whatever. Oh, and I want to set the display name here so that uh, <coughs> this is what's going to show up in the, in the dashlet interface. So, memberships, expired, what do we say? Need call, something like that, whatever. <clears throat> okay, Ajax, those settings, we got a view, click save. Figure your dashboard, now the membership need calls there. Maybe we want to pop that in here somewhere. And done. So, uh, to, uh, from here, yeah, <laughs> load that issue queue up and we'll, uh, prioritize. <laughs> well, some of those, I mean, basically the big, the big chunk of it works. There's always going to be some little things that you want to have extra, but you can do so much right now. I was going to show just like this one to stuff works. Did I have something that had a pager? Oh yeah. This was a pager working. It's all very uh, integrated. You want to download a CSV. Let's go ahead and get it right there. <clears throat> all right. Um, I can talk about your uh, thing after the after the session, though. We can get a little more uh, complicated views going. But I wanted to make a demonstration example. Eileen wants to see some uh, CIVI CRM entity. Oh wow! All right. <laughs> so I was playing with the event uh, CIVI CRM. So I went up to structure under content types. We might change that menu, but. Uh, you see event, manage display, click that one there. I've already enabled a display suite layout. Uh, so uh, none of these fields had, you can see some of them have, uh, like the Booleans have yes, no, or true, false uh, display formatters you can show. What else did we do on this page? So the format column ends the right end. Uh, that's made possible. It's added in the CIVI CRM entity module that we do that. Yeah, but you have to enable Display Suite to get that. Ah, yes. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah. <clears throat> it invokes all that code is in Display Suite hooks to make that to do that data. Yeah. So we can set a region if you want to have multiple regions, left columns. Uh, three columns, headers and footers, whatever. Uh, I was making a simple example. Maybe I should have done that, but it's like here on the event tile, I wanted to have it be in a H2 a heading. Uh, maybe you want, maybe not that one. What content type are we looking at again? We're, we're looking at a CIVI CRM events. So this is data that you would enter or could enter in CIVI CRM being manipulated in Drupal. This is not a Drupal content type. Uh, 
this one. Maybe you want to uh, add a class, or maybe we want strong. I don't know. So can you show us how you came to this script? So this is like the display suite. Yeah, I came up here from structure. Right now we got it on content types. Yeah. And I went to event, manage display, oh, default. So display yeah. There's also the, there is the manage fields tab, and you can uh, change the order of the form fields for the edit and add pages. So when you install uh, the entities module, mm -hmm. you will get there for yeah. <coughs> content type under the structure, which is for all of the, or whatever. All the exposed CVC entities. Yeah, right. Yes, correct. All that, all that, uh, those links will be there, and then the managed fields isn't showing up. I think that's kind of generated default by Drupal's, and this is the kind of stuff you get for free when you're hooking into the Drupal and entity if API. Content, content, they will then see uh, as well? uh, I don't have that links in there. That's a great little thing to add to the module. It's still the dev version on the project page, so yeah. this is very much uh, new yeah. and. Um, a little raw, a lot of things work. Uh, we do like people to test it and submit issues because there's a lot of stuff to test here. Also, if you have uh, custom fields, that's showing up now uh, very recently. I haven't got the custom field uh, formats going yet, but uh, I'm really close. Uh, also, your option lists, you can choose to display. Where was an option? the option ID or the option value. You like participant status or something like that. How are you managing custom fields on the CIVI entity? So they're, uh, I just don't have the formatters. They're coming on, coming into the here. You can just display them wherever you want yeah. and it outputs them and you can <coughs> edit them too through the interface. Right. So. There's a little bit of th something to think about how to handle the multi-valued custom field sets. And um, that's a little different than Drupal's used to. Everything's on a per field basis. So we'll, we'll figure that out. And this is the beginning of this type of integration. This is now, here's a, here's a foundation, y'all, OK? The, the future is wide open now. Let's all, you know, and I'm, I'm sure, Eileen, we're all open to suggestions and what, what do you want to do with it, what does work, what doesn't work, and uh, you get so much already. Just, just at all these entity modules that you can use with it, to me it's worth it to, to, to start with. Maybe you don't need edit forms right now for that. You're doing all that in the admin interface, that's great. But uh, the, our use case is really for the public display of data. That's the big deal, and let's make it, I'm gonna, we're gonna, you're gonna make a Drupal theme anyway, so let's put everything in that theme and let's have it working on the mobile phone. <clears throat> All right, what was I doing? I needed to save this. And I already had the uh, Civi Serum event one here, you can notice the H2. I'm gonna refresh this after that saves and let's start date's gonna be in bold, labels in line or not, and then comments if you so choose. And so I could have made a slicker deal. I mean, use your imagination. If you used Display Suite before, I mean, it's all working in there. So, um, anyway, the date became bold. We changed that with the with the wrapper. Okay. And then one thing, uh, so manage fields tab for the event. You can order these or hide things. What I'd really like to do too is figure out how to make multiple types of forms so that you could have uh, more than just the one form. Right now we got the one form. So the order of these forms or the fields can be uh, uh, changed here. And if you want to do a Drupal field, you know, it's 
Obviously, the Drupal field data is stored in the Drupal database. This is not storing it in Civi CRM, so keep that in mind. If you are having Civi CRM, if you need your data in with Civi CRM, use a custom field in Civi CRM. If it's, you know, a video or some flare or something, you know, makes sense to use it in Drupal. If it's not data that's going to be migrated in some spreadsheets or somewhere else or whatever. Are you able to get these, like, so you add a field to the event entity uh -huh. on the Drupal side? Yeah. Can you get that then to show on kind of the interface? I saw something around, there's like a Drupal entities module. Yeah. That's some bad one. one, yeah. So like no, that, that functionality ago. is not there. I did. I don't know. I mean, it you could be done. But it could totally be done if you uh, if you had a Drupal module and you use the entity metadata wrapper and you uh, um, inserted it into the page content with a hook or something. You could you could but do it's it. Quite hard to do that generically on Civi. <coughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, but it, but it could be done. But the, you know, I, if you're doing it, maybe make a make a web form for your form and get your Drupal data in there right with it. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, you can do that with a number of techniques. Uh, I can talk more about that later. I've got some blog articles out there how to do that. Ben Cobb wrote that when he was working with us, and I can okay. show you. We took, in the end, we integrated a good portion of what he did into the 2.x. Okay. Um, but not, That's not the displaying onto the city because there's not. I have a very generic answer to that. I just wanted to add a field here to show you it all working on the edit page, or the ad page. Ba -ba -ba. And so on the ad pages, we're hiding the ID field, and it's going to work to work out just fine. <clears throat> and so here's all the different fields, decent uh, widgets. Where's the date field? So here's like participant role, this is an option list. It's going to preload with the API, the options, and map it to the IDs. And here you can see is the image field uh, that functions as you would droop field, uh, expect a Drupal field to function. I don't know if this, I just use the test data when you install Civi. This is uh, Civi Serum 4.6. Yeah, so I know it works real good there. We've used it on 4.5 and 4.4 also. Uh, Eileen might have more to speak about the IPA, API changes between 4.4 and 4.6, but it, uh, it's been getting better with age and yeah. consistency. Most, most of the changes <coughs> have really just been minor with like just, you know, we know what's going to happen with the API the API should look like on all different entities and it's just bringing them a little bit closer to that each incremental version. Certainly at the crab level there's not anything dramatic changing. So I'm using, I've done, I, this is, this version, I'm just, this is patched. Uh, I've been developing on this machine. Uh, Ooh, look at that. Validation test. Neat. <laughs> <laughs> Pay later receipt text cannot be more than this and that. Uh, so that I don't know what's up with that. Yeah. There's going to be some little picadillos.
but it's safe. So, mm -hmm. so um, we do have a couple minutes left. Is there any other questions? Coleman? Okay. Well, Webforms obviously has a lot more of the business logic and things into it. So we, uh, I would definitely, this is not a competition or a replacement for the, uh, the Webforms. <laughs> All right. This is, no. <laughs> a lot more, I mean, obviously, um, I mean, we use the Webform on every project and uh, we're going to continue to use that. Uh, this is kind of, maybe you can look at this as a proof of concept. Uh, that uh, with this you could make your own forms more now programmatically that you want to be very uh, specific on what you do and just like you got on the web forum and creating activities and doing integrating doing a membership and event registration and all these things at the same time anytime you're going to want to do any business stuff like that I mean obviously use web form I mean, I'm a Drupal guy, but I would use Civi CRM. There's no, what are you going to do in Drupal that has the functionality that Civi CRM has out of the box? It's not there. So, use Civi CRM. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you all. Appreciate it.